Good evening, Claflin. Prime and I would like to just say a few quick words. Um, we miss everyone. We miss the pageantry of Pensick. We miss the camaraderie. We miss the wonderful, glorious acts of chivalry and even the tiny little acts of kindness and courtesy. Everything that makes Pensick what it is and Claflin's presence there graces it that much more. As we walk around the enormous site that is Penzik, it's always wonderful to see the presence of Cleflins everywhere, whether on the battlefield, on the archery range, in displays of arts and sciences, or in volunteering to help make the event run, and those little kindnesses that we do for each other. Uh, we miss you, and we miss Penzik. We're proud to be Cleflinders. Thank you for making us so proud to be Cleflinders. One of the defining features of Cleflins is that we are a monolithic group. We don't have any shires or cantons or colleges. We just have Cleflins. That means that we're used to seeing each other every week. Everyone sees everyone. It's easy to keep track of who's doing what. And then comes Penzik. Because it's so close to us, most of us tend to go, and we scatter to the four winds. And so you don't see the Cleflanders. You don't know who's doing well or who might need help. So when Constanza and I were Baron and Baroness of Cleflands, we tried to come up with a way to help Cleflanders keep in touch with each other at the war. So we came up with a little game of steal the nebbles. Every camp that had a Cleflander in it got a nebble. A little blue ball with some eyeballs. Just a funny. And the rule was that any camp could put their nebble out and people would try to steal their nebble. Whichever camp ended the Penzik War with the most nebbles would be the winner. So one night, I was attending a party at a Cleflin's camp, and they said that they were having problems that one of their nebbles had caught leprosy. The paint was coming off. I asked to see it. And because there would be so many people in their camp that night, they had one camp member assigned to guard the nebbles. It would be most bad on that person if any nebbles were to be hijacked from them. So when I asked to see the nebble, they told me, no, I could not. I might steal their nebble. I pointed out that I was the person running the game, not the person playing the game. So I was not a player. I should be able to see the nebble. The person guarding the nebbles was not buying this. He thought it was shenanigans. I was up to something. Said that I could not see it. I tried to convince them that my intentions were completely harmless. I just wanted to see and know how to make a better nebble for next year. We went back and forth on this quite a bit. This was at a party. Other people noticed. Other Cleflanders who were not camp members noticed. Hi all, Snowden here. I just wanted to report in that my favorite Pensick memories are of the Barony and the Friends of the Barony coming down to celebrate and party with us on the Tuesday of War Week, whether it was the pin the belt on the Rhino and Twister party with the Furies, or if it's the wine and cheese party where we get to sit around and talk and have beautiful conversations with our friends. Um, those are my favorite memories of Pensick. Distilling a lifetime of memories of the Cleflins and Penzik down to a single moment is a difficult task. Keeping it to 60 seconds it is impossible. I'll be as brief as I can, although be warned, I'm a knight. Um, uh, when I'm asked or I recollect about what started my love of Cleflins and the populace and all of you and, and, and our Baron and Baroness and our Baron and Baronesses, uh, it has to be when I authorized. I authorized about 22 years ago, we think. We think Penzik 27. Um, and I was training uh, in Eastwatch, and I showed up at the battlefield, having never fought in a melee period, let alone Penzik. So here's this 
here's this Nudnik showing up with a tiny, tiny heater shield, because that's what I was training with, uh, wearing an old East Watch tabard with the tower and the bubble heads that represented the Cleflin's knights across the top, and not knowing a thing. And Cleflin's recognized my tabard, at least, thank God, and I said, uh, who are you? And I said, oh, I'm, I'm Artair. Hi, nice to meet you. And, and uh, they took me in, they got me a bigger shield, they told me where to stand in the melee. They immediately, immediately made me part of the family. Not just the fighters. It was, uh, I remember the food in the baronial tent, or whatever the tent was at the time. It wasn't the baronial tent we have. I remember the meat pies. The meat pies stick out for some reason. Uh, and I was fed every battle uh, that was there. I was given water every battle that was there. And, and even though it took me a couple more years after that before I became a true blooded Cleflander, um, uh, it was those initial memories that, that never faded. Cleflands is one of the brightest, most generous, most caring groups of people. All of you. All of us. Uh, I can't imagine going through life without our family in the Cleflands. Uh, it's amazing. And it all started as that Nudnik walking on the battlefield wearing an East Watch tabard. Uh, that's probably my fondest Cleflands memory because all of them stem from that point. Hello, Baron of the Cleflands. Duke Ike and Duchess Runa here. Great to see you. Uh, we're going to tell a very brief story of Penzik. It was Penzik 40. We were prince and princess at the time. And uh, it was a tale of how the North Oaken unit with the Barony of the Clefflands fighters, a part of it, got a dragon's teeth for taking a bridge and stealing it away from the uh, Elanian uh, uh, kingdom. Uh, and they were hopping mad. But that's a long story, so I was going to be brief, and therefore I'll have to write up more of a story and tell it in a different way. But that was a great time. One of my favorite memories of uh, the Barony of the Clefflands, the battle unit, uh, and as prince. Also, I wanted to add that uh, Rune and I have talked and uh, decided that next year we will be making really nice baronial battle tabards with the uh, baronial device, the nebulae, and we will be wearing uh, the full colors of the barony that were allowed uh, for Penzing next year, having been inspired by all the pictures that uh, Duchess Runa put up, and we got to see all of our uh, our old household uh, guys when we were wearing them back in the day. So that's a pledge that Rune and I give, and uh, also we hope to have as many of our uh, household fighters wearing uh, baronial colors as well. So uh, there you go. Again, we miss you, and hope you're all doing okay, and uh, look forward to a time when we can all meet again. Bye-bye. Bye. Their Excellencies asked for memories of Penzik. Since it is currently storming and raining, it brought back the memory of the first year Anharad and I camped with the Camp of the Three Bears at Penzik, where we have been camping ever since. It's been said that you enjoy sharing the good times with your friends, but what made you friends is going through the bad times together. And that year, the storm was a bad time. Every Penzik has a big rainstorm. This one was a little bit more than most. We had a little bit of warning, so we knew something was coming. It was close to dinner time, so we banked the fires high and huddled into the dining tent and figured we'd just wait it out. Then the winds came, and the rain, and the lightning. We had sheets of lightning crossing the sky with thunder that sounded like sizzling bacon and ripping linen, and a single peal of thunder would last nearly a minute. It was, it was like a war in heaven. People used words that you normally only find in overblown 1940s science fiction novels to describe it, and they were right. The adults were frantically trying to hold the tent down. All of the children were stuffed underneath the dining room table, which was the safest place in camp. One of the tents could not take the wind, 
and one of the seams let go like a zipper, the tent was instantly shredded and flooded. The rain was coming down fast enough that we did not have our fire go out, but we did have our fire float away out of the fire pit and go merrily down the camp. We got through it. We always do, because friends help each other. But it was very much a time when this gentle rain that we're having today makes me very glad to be in four solid walls. I hope all of you are doing well. Look out for each other. We're Clefflanders. It's what we do. Hello, I am Cadvin of the Autumn Wood, and I'd like to share with you one of my favorite Penzik memories. I've had the honor of serving on the Mid-Realms Champions team for archery three years in a row now. And it was last year, we were on the archery ranges right before the competition was to start, the Mid-Realm and its allies on one side, and the East Kingdom and its allies on the other side. And Her Majesty Fortune, Queen of the East, was giving a speech to her uh, archers assembled there in order to encourage them on the ranges that day. When she sees me out of the corner of her eye, I was baronial archery champion at the time, and so I was wearing, of course, the mantle of the archery champion. And she sees the nebulae and she says, oh, Cleflin's right in the middle of her speech. And she says, I see you people everywhere. You are all over Penzik and you are always helping out and doing things. It's amazing what you people do. And she's going on and on uh, like this. And I thank you, your majesty. That, that's exceptionally kind of you. Thank you. And she says, you know, I have heard tales of your magnificent art museum and the treasures that you have there. I think um, it was right before we were supposed to have the uh, medieval monsters exhibit there. And she says, with so many of you here, have you left your treasures unguarded? And I say, well, your majesty, I, I believe we have a sufficient force at home to keep them safe. And she says, hmm, we'll have to see about that. And it was just such a funny moment that in the middle of addressing her, her archers, she turns to, to me because she saw the nebulae and to say all these wonderful things about Cleflins. Now, it's great that she was saying that. She was also uh, painting a target on my back, which I'm sure was part of her intention, but it was great to hear such nice things about our group from someone who is royalty of another kingdom in front of all of these archers from kingdoms across the known world. So that is one of my favorite Penzik memories, and I cannot wait to make more with all of you next year. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bearing of the Cleflins Campfire Court for Penzik. We've missed everyone and being able to hang out, but we're looking forward to a bright future. This will pass, and we want to get back to things as quickly as you do. I would like to take this moment to reach out and thank everyone who contributed to the videos at the beginning of court, as well as the numerous pictures that were submitted. Thank you very much for sharing your Penzik memories. It is always good to not only see different takes on Penzik than what we're used to, but to also experience the Wayback Machine of Penzik and check out some of those amazing um, leg pictures. Thank you, whoever that was. Uh, nevertheless, um, again, thank you. Speaking of memories, we didn't actually take a moment to record our memories independently, so you will get them on the fly. Your Excellency, what is your favorite Cleflin's based Penzik memory? Well, Watching all the uh, photos throughout the week that people posted and uh, seeing some of the other memories already. Uh, again, thank you for everyone that uh, posted those. Uh, it reminded me a lot of, of a lot of things throughout the years that uh, I appreciate about the Cleflins and, and so many wonderful memories of Penzix. Uh, everything from uh, marching to the battlefield led by bagpipes to the auction parties and just general shenanigans, you know, things like uh, kilt parties, 
and so on and so forth. But what really stands out for me more than all of that is not really one individual memory, but a trend that I've noticed throughout the years with the Clefflands. And that's the, the generosity and the hospitality of each and every camp uh, in the Clefflands and the way that they interact at Penzik. Uh, I remember in my early years as an adult, uh, running around at, uh, at Penzik, uh, being out late, uh, maybe drinking a little, uh, or even earlier in the day, sometimes running to command meetings and such. Uh, as I passed for a baronial camps, people never failed to greet me, to invite me in, to offer me a drink or water, um, food most especially. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you to the entire barony for all of those years of memories and all those good times. How about you? Well, not nearly as exciting as yours. Um, the one memory I have that really sticks out to me uh, with the Esprit de Corps and the, the camaraderie and the closeness of the Clefflands would be one of the first years that a good friend of ours in the camp camped with us down in Fury's Keep, and that would be uh, a young Cordell. Uh, if you don't remember her, she moved up to Michigan um, with her husband and her baby boy, although she has come back to visit. At any rate, it was one of her first Pensics, and as a camp, we were all getting together to get ready to go to Midrum Court as an entourage, uh, and we played a bit of dress-up Barbie with her, so she had her beautiful tutor, um, a French hood was donated, uh, jewelry pieces, and she was definitely the belle of the ball, and it was great to see us all girls coming together, helping out a fellow campmate as well as a relatively new person to the society and basically going out on the town. And it was phenomenal. And the picture is somewhere out there. <laughs> sure somewhere. it is. It, once, once a picture hits the internet, it's never gone, really. That's true. Mm. Um, so but that's we have, my favorite. Oh, good. Sorry to interrupt. So we do have a couple of pieces of business. Uh, so we're going to, at this time, ask our Herald, Nial, to open our court. Here opens the court of Crispin and Gianna, Baron and Baroness of Cleftlands. Lord Nial, would you please call our first piece of business? Their Excellencies call forth Zofia der Kinder. It shall be known by all that we, Crispin and Gianna, Baron and Baroness of Cleftlands, wish to commend the work of Zofia der Kinder and thank her publicly for her dedication to the youth of the barony by granting her the award of St. Alfred. Done this eighth day of August, Anno Societatus 55, as we shelter in our beloved lands away from the plagued battlefields of Penzic wars of legend and lore. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Sophia, it has been a pleasure having you as our Minister of Youth within the Barony, and for you to be such a strong advocate for youth within the group. They truly are our future. So thank you again for your service, and we do appreciate all that you have contributed. Thanks. Lord Neal, could you please call our second piece of business? Their Excellencies summon before them Karl von Leipziger, also called Karl of Cleflands. Deserving of notice for his service as our keeper of the Iron Keys and demonstrations, do we, Crispin and Gianna, Baron and Baroness of Cleftlands, hereby commend Karl von Leipziger, and by our hands gift unto him the baronial award of St. Alfred. Let it be done this eighth day of August, Anno Societatus 55, while sheltering from the plagued battlefields and the Penzic Wars. Thank you, Sergeant. Carl, we wanted to 
as Baron and Baroness, recognize your dedication to the barony and your service uh, that you have performed uh, since you've joined the barony, more or less. You've always been out there. You've been volunteering at a lot of uh, events to move things around. Um, but most especially, your work with the Iron Key and then as our demo coordinator over the last couple of years. Uh, we really felt that it stood out above and beyond, and we wanted to present you with this award. Thank you. Their Excellencies call forth Niccolo Bartolazzi. Let it be known that we, Crispin and Gianna, Baron and Baroness of Cleftlands, wish to commend one who has shown excellence in teaching and learning the arts of performance of Commedia. Therefore, we are minded to give unto Capitano Niccolo Barlazzi our award of the Argent Crescent, done this eighth day of August, Anno Societatus 55, from our beloved lands, as we shelter beyond the plagued battlefields and the Pensic Wars. Niccolo, although you've been recognized at a kingdom level for your contributions to the arts, it seemed that everywhere I looked this year, your name was popping up again, whether it was acting as the Dean of the College of Performing Arts for RUM, or one of the first people who stood out as a teacher for Virtual Penzik. We have always appreciated your passion for Comedia and wanted to recognize you on a local level for your contributions in the arts. So thank you. Harold, would you please call our fourth piece of business? Their Excellencies call before them Andor Ezust Fogak. All hear the words of Crispin and Gianna, Baron and Baroness of the Cleftlands. Like the three barbs of Poseidon's mighty trident, our martial forces are made victorious by those who field rattan, rapier, or bow in defense of our barony and kingdom. In recognition of the valor and dedication Andor Ezostfogak has displayed from the shadows, defending the Cleftlands during the times of the Plague Wars, we bestow upon him an award of the Azure Trident. Done by our hands this eighth day of August, Anno Societatus 55, at our court in honor of the Penzic Wars. Ander, since you've returned to the barony, we have noticed the way that you have jumped right back into armored combat and truly embraced the spirit of it. Uh, we've watched your improvement over the months and we were particularly impressed with the way that you jumped into Sir Artair's Shadow Pentic Challenge uh, and did so well with it and uh, brought such life and spirit to it. Uh, we wanted to take a moment to recognize you. Thank you so much. Y'all, I think there's still one piece of business left. If you could please call our last recipient. Their Excellencies call forth Bronwyn Snowden. Immense wealth is symbolized by the overflowing cup, as the bounty is so great that it cannot be contained within a single vessel. The barony of the Cleftlands is in this manner enriched by the people who rally under her banner. We, Crispin and Gianna, fifth baron and baroness of our line, know well that there are many among our ranks who dedicate themselves to the cultivation of our plentiful lands. Their acts have shaped not only the landscape, but the very bedrock upon which the barony nobly stands. It is this tireless service in all forms which contributes to our shared prosperity and enriches our populace so that the barony of the Cleftlands remains a fertile field in which the seeds of dreams may grow. That which nourishes these lands where the river once burned must be celebrated. Henceforth, let it be known to all nobles and gentles present that it is both our honor and our privilege to recognize Bronwyn Snowden as a member of our Order of the Azure Chalice. 
with this distinction is granted the right to bear the badge, fieldless, a chalice azure, within and conjoined to an annulet argent, estensily ghouls, henceforth without let or hindrance. Done by our hands this eighth day of August, Anno Societatus 55, during the plague time of the Pensic Wars. Thank you, Neil. So if you haven't had an opportunity to get to know the Honorable Lady Snowden before, she has been in service to the barony in some way, shape or form for a few decades, but we never talk about age amongst the girls. Nevertheless, I got to know her personally more as an event steward at Northern Oak and War Maneuvers and as one of essentially the silent partners and movers and shakers of that particular event. But it was in digging in the histories that I realized that she's been a contributor to the barony in many ways, shapes and forms for a very, very long time. Um, Any time that His Excellency and I have needed someone to perform a particular task, her hand is up, she is saying yes, and she has been invaluable to us over the years. And we wanted to take this moment to recognize her as one of the hidden bedrocks of the Clefflands and to say thank you publicly for your service and to let you know that we appreciate you. And finally, kiss, kiss, sister. Thank you, Niall. Thank you, Lady Snowden. Thank you. Here closes the court of Crispin and Gianna. So thank you everyone for attending our Clefflands Campfire Court. We had a lot of fun putting this together and we just wanted to say, stay safe, stay well, stay masked, and we'll see you all again very soon. Um, We only have one more item really, and it's not really a court business, but it is a time-honored tradition of the Barony of the Clefflands. Every year we have uh, His Grace Laurelin present the Pensick speech for newcomers, but even for us people that have been around for years, uh, it's wonderful and new to hear every year. Your Grace, without further ado, if you would please. Good morrow all. Our good Baron and Baroness asked me to address you. In these times when we normally would have been on the fields of the battles of the Pensic War, this year we are not. I would enjoin you all not to look at what we have lost or missed, though we do miss each other's company, of course, in merry fellowship. What is important is that we look to our future, for once again we will meet on those fields in fierce strife, and in those glades and meadows, in fellowship and in the market. We will walk together under bright sunlight, moonlight and starlight, all one, all 12,000 of us. So for those of you who will prepare in just a scant 360 days to join me and all of your best friends on the fields of the Pensic War, I will tell you, prepare well, you now have the time. Those of you who have been many times, finish those projects that you started for the 20th Battle of the Pensic War. And next year, remember that when you go to the Pensic War, it will be hot, it will be cold, it will rain and there will be drought, it will be boggy and it will also be dusty. It may snow, It'll probably frost, and that will be your first day and night. Remember all your friends well, but most importantly, look to our future, for we are all not alone. And remember, in the language of ancient Valinor, I will tell you all, Ota Ilomia, Ora, and Tuluva. The night passes, day shall come again.
the clapons come to battle when we take up sword and shield. When our form and trembling see us, knowing we shall never yield. Who among them would not reckon? Who can blame them if they turn? Knowing we bear with our army strength to make the waters burn. Like a rain of fiercest fire as a river all aflame. We're to muster foam and tremble, know ye well the Cleflin's name. We care not one whit for glory, we've come not to claim renown, but to serve our noble barony, serve the oak and serve our crown, and to do all things with honor, win born with our warriors' might, then to share with daylight's foam and camp by friendship come the night. Like the rain of fiercest fire as a river all aflame, we're to muster foam and tumble, know ye well the cleftless name. Winds of war will slacken, peace prevailing o'er the land, but for now we're called to battle, up and firmly gain an hand. Bend your bows, pick up your scute, proudly bear your fence of steel. Show them what your hearts are made of, let them taste of mid zeal. Like a rain of fierce fire, as a river all aflame, where to muster foam and tremble, know ye well the Cleflin's name.